This is Joseph Myers and I'm here to show you how to wipe a dedicated server and install FreeBSD 11.1 onto it. The first step is to log into your Speedy KVM control panel at manage.speedykvm.com. Click on your the server that you want to work with and go to VNC and look at the address and port which are shown there and use that address and that port and the password which I'm hiding below it to log in using screen sharing on Mac OS and then here is the way your control panel will look. So the first thing I want to do is to mount a CD-ROM. So I'm going to go ahead and make this window a lot smaller and I'm going to see if I can make it even smaller. So Unfortunately, it's still there. It is FreeBSD 11.1 64-bit. .1 so I'm going to mount that CD-ROM mounted. A reboot is required for this changes to take effect. So this is a reboot that you have to do from this side. It can't be done from the server itself. So see how I'm logged into my server right now. I'm going to wipe it. So click reboot click yes and by the way make sure that you do settings uh oh I forgot to change the boot order boot order needs to be CD-ROM and then hard disk so uh oh didn't work let's try it again reboot yes Let's go. So pretty soon it should receive the reboot command. Okay, it's, it's been rebooted again. And now, just type 1. Now I should be booting from the CD. Great. Welcome to FreeBSD. Would you like to begin an installation or use a live CD? I would say install. So you don't need to type anything except for return or enter. The default key map is a standard US key map. That's fine. Please choose a host name. I'm going to do d1.myers.media. Optional system components no debugging. I do want documentation. Just arrow down and then push the space bar to, to select it. Don't want lib32. I don't want the port tree. That's all that I want. Okay. Auto is fine. You have to partition the entire disk. Yes. Yes. I'll just do the regular MBR, that's fine. 90 gigabytes, MBR, BSD, free DSC, UFS, that's fine. Finish. Enter, I'm just pushing enter. Commit, enter. Extract everything. It's incredible how fast computers are now. 
Okay, now select a password for root. I've already generated a root password off screen, so I'm going to try to type that in. Retype it. Please select a network interface to configure. That's good. Yes. Yes. Yes, look, we'll try it. It might not work, but we'll try it. That's fine. Okay, I just tabbed and then enter on okay. Select a region, okay. Type two, American North and South. Then, United States. Central, most areas. Yeah, let's do that one. Yes. July 31st. That's accurate. Time and date. What I usually do is I go to my cell phone, click on time.gov, and just confirm whether or not the time on time.gov is pretty much the same. So it says 557.23. Right here it says 556. So I'm going to change that. 557. 557. 50, I'll do. 53. Okay, ready? Wait until the time on your phone says 52, then push enter. Okay, so I'm gonna, if I were running a computer all my own with or without being in a in a um, large server environment, I'd probably install local unbound, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use whatever is installed on the network or Google. So. Yes, I do want SSHD installed, definitely. I'm not going to be using a mouse for anything. I do want the network time protocol daemon to be installed. And I... Um, sure, let's... Well, actually, it's a server. We probably don't need to adjust the CPU frequency at all. So let's not dump kernel crash dumps. I'm not going to be trying to debug anything. So. SSHD and NTPD are the only things I'm installing. Um, two system security hardening options. High process is running as other users. High process is running as other groups. Disable reading it. Disable process debugging. Randomize the PID. Insert a card page. Clean the temp file system. I do want to clean the temp file system. Oops, how do you go back? I would just say no, I don't want to add any users to it now. So let's go back. System hardening. So I want to clean the temp file system and definitely I want to disable the send mail service. Okay. So um, everything is fine. So now I'm going to click exit, apply configuration and exit installer. Now finished.
No, I don't want to open a shell right now. Actually, I do. The very first thing I want to do is to, and when I um, configure a new server, is to install a good shell. And then the next thing I do after that is to is to enable logging for every single shell command that I type. So that's going to be part of a separate video, but I do want to show you how to install the shell because that's part of the very beginning process. The logging part of it is part of a separate video. So yes, I would like to open a shell. So let me do package update. So the package management tool is not installed yet, but that's definitely something I want to install. So type yes. Or type Y for yes. And since we're just installing a relatively recent operating system, we don't need to update it at all, but I do want to do package install bash, which is going to be my default shell. So type yes. So this didn't work on the when still running from the from the CD, so let's just do let's just do Let's go back here. We'll have to go back to the regular control panel. And we'll have to change the boot order back so that it will start from the hard disk now. And we'll have to go to the CD-ROM and unmount that so that that won't be mounted either. And then we'll have to reboot. So let's click reboot. Yes. So this time when it boots, it'll boot from the hard drive and then we can successfully install bash. Notice this is booting from hard disk now. Just type a one to go a little quicker. And here we go. everything so you know what to expect so I'm going to try real quick logging in as root with the password excellent very good so that's that's all folks